Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the free response question review. Today we will be looking at the 2017 Calculus BC question number three from the non-calculator portion. It is your classic derivative looking graph. This is a graph of f prime, and they're going to ask us a bunch of questions about f based on this graph here. So a couple things to note, since we're looking at a derivative, what you see is not what you get. The things that you are most obviously looking at when it comes to local maxes and mins are not maxes and mins at all, but they will probably serve a purpose, who knows. Uh, it says, the function f is differentiable on the closed interval negative 6 to 5 and satisfies f of negative 2 equaling 7. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle, three line segments, and is shown in the figure above. So, in part a, it's asking us, find the value of f of negative 6 and f of 5. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to go and just put a little cloud, red cloud around this thing. I'm going to call this my anchor. Now, it's not really a mathematical term, but it's the thing that anchors down my definite integral. Because if I want to find f of negative 6, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and integrate from negative 6 to negative 2. Again, this negative 2 is the anchor portion. And I'm going to go and integrate the f prime of x, whoops, not t, of x dx. And what that's going to get me is it's going to get me f of negative 2 minus f of negative 6. And since I'm going to try to solve for f of negative 6, I will go and do some algebraic manipulation to figure out getting this stuff by itself. So, what does that equal? Well, that means that f of negative 6 is going to be equal to f of negative 2 minus the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f prime of x dx. Well, I know what some of this stuff is. This dude is 7, and this is going to be minus whatever this integral plays out for me. So what is this? Well, the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 looks like it's going to be this triangle right here on the inside. So what is the area of this triangle? Well, it's going to be 1 half, and then the base is going to be, looks like 1, 2, 3, 4. And the height at that moment in time is going to be 2. So it looks like I'm going to get 7 minus 4, which is going to make f of negative 6 equal 3. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's take a look at f of 5. So again, I'm going to do the exact same thing, using f of negative 2 being 7 as my anchor. So again, integral, and this time because it's 5, I'm going to anchor myself at the bottom. So from negative 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx. Well, again, based on the first fundamental theorem of calculus, I get f of 5 minus f of negative 2. And because f of 5 is what I'm solving for, I'll go and just kick this dude over. And while I'm doing that, I'll go and convert him to a 7. So I know that f of 5 is equal to, looks like, 7 plus, this time, uh, the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx. So what is that? 7 plus. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and come up here and go from negative 2 to 5 on my integral. So from negative 2 to 5, well, that's all the way over. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm doing a semicircle that's negative and a triangle that's positive. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that real quick. So a semicircle that's negative and then a triangle that's positive. So uh, let's see. The semicircle has a radius of 2, so that's going to be 1 half pi, and then r squared. But I got to remember that this thing on the inside here is a negative value. And then I'm going to add that to this triangle up here. So 1 half base, which is going to be 1, 2, 3. So 1 half times 3 times 2. 1 half times 3 times 2. So I feel like I'm going to get those guys to cancel. If I move them over, I can say that f of 5 is equal to 7 
minus, looks like that's going to be a 4 but a 2, so 7 minus 2 pi plus 3, so 10 minus 2 pi is equal to f of 5. Okay, those are the two values. That is part A. Uh, that took a lot of space. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Um, and we will see you in a few seconds. Now that I've cleaned up the board, let's move on to part B. On what intervals is f increasing and justify your answer? Okay, this should be fast. f will be increasing whenever f prime is positive. f prime will be positive when it is above the x-axis. So that's what I'm looking for. Anything above the x-axis will be positive values of f prime. In other words, positive slope values. So where are we increasing? We can say then that f, I'll move him down, that way we can see him, f is increasing on, looks like, negative 6 to negative 2. Union looks like 2 to 5. And the reason why is because f prime is above the x-axis, you can say f prime is positive. And that would be good enough for b. That's a pretty easy point right there. So, all right, let's go and move on to c, since we're already kind of here. It says, find the absolute minimum of f on the closed interval negative 6 to 5, and then justify your answer. Okay. Absolute min. We've been in this situation before for part C. Bef the way I tackle absolute mins and maxes, I always list my candidates first. So my candidates for an absolute min are going to be x equals negative 6, 5, and looks like negative 2 and positive 2. And I know that negative 2 is definitely not one of them. Negative 2 is a local maximum. So we can say that to avoid all the work. But we already know that f of negative 2 is 7, so it might be easier just to put that down on the list, and then he'll be disqualified organically. So after we've identified the absolute min to max candidates, let's go and find out what those values are of the function. Let's find out what f of negative 6 and f of 5 and f of negative 2 and all that stuff are. Good thing is, three out of these four answers we already have because f of negative 6 is equal to 3. We found that out in part a. f of 5 is 10 minus 2 pi. We found that out in part a as well. f of negative 2 is equal to 7. We figured that out before we even began the FRQ. It told me what f of negative 2 is. That is the anchor. So realistically, with C, the only thing we have to figure out is what f of 2 is. So it's almost like we're back to A, except now we're finding out a different value. So that's going to be the integral from negative 2. Again, I will use my anchor as the baseline. From negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx. Well, from here, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to back that up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to say the integral here is going to give me f of 2 minus f of negative 2. Almost ended up with a misuse of equality or a linkage error. My apologies. Uh, this due to 7, we know that. So f of 2 is equal to 7 plus the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx. We just have to find out what that is. Well, from negative 2 to 2, that's just this half circle here. So it's going to be 7 minus, well, the integral here is going to be 1 half pi r, so in this case, 2 squared. So again, I feel like we've been here before, so that's going to be 7 minus, looks like, 2 pi. And so now we just compare all of our answers. So which one's bigger? Uh, which one, uh, actually, which one is the smallest? Is it 3? Is it 10 minus 2 pi? Is it 7? Or is it 7 minus 2 pi? It's this guy. Because 2 pi is about 6 something or other. So 7 minus that is going to be less than 1. So 
all you have to say now is you have to say f has an absolute min of 7 minus 2, I'll just call pi pi because I don't have the pi function in my keyboard here, uh, 7 minus 2 pi when x equals 2. All right, so that's B and C. We're almost there. Let me clean up the board and we will get to D. Part D says, for each of F double prime of negative 5 and F double prime of 3, find the value or explain why it does not exist. Okay, well, F double prime of negative 5, that means now I'm looking at the slope of this graph. And so where negative 5 is, it's going to be like right here. I'll change colors for that. It's going to be right here. So I've got to find the slope right there. Well, luckily, this thing's linear. So I can say then that f double prime of negative 5 is equal to, uh, I can use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or I can use a slope triangle. It looks like I'm going down 2 to the right by 4. So down 2 to the right by 4 is going to be negative 1 half. So not that bad, not that bad. And then here, f double prime of 3, I guess I'll just finish the problem in purple, um, explain why it doesn't exist. Well, f, prime of, f double prime of 3, well, that's going to be right here. Well, what is the slope right here? Well, it's undefined, right? That's a corner right there. Now, here's where you can't justify this. You can't just say, does not exist because there's a corner there. Okay? You're going to want to use limits to show that this thing doesn't exist. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, what is the limit as x goes to 3 from the left of f double prime of x? And then I'm going to say, contrast that with the limit as x goes to 3 from the right of f double prime of x. And when these two answers don't match up, because they will not match up, right? They're both linear on either side, and they're not linear the same way. Um, we will say, therefore, we don't exist. Our, our, double, our f double prime does not exist there. So what is the slope heading into 3 from the left? Well, that's going to be up 3 That's going to be up 2 and to the right by 1. So that's going to be 2 right there. And then, as you approach 3 from the left, your slope value is going to be down 1, 2 to the right by 1, 2. So negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So, that would be enough justification right there. You could say the limit as x goes to 3 of f double prime of x does not exist. Therefore, f double prime of negative 3 does not exist. Okay, I think that is going to be enough to wrap it up for this particular FRQ. As always, please leave comments or questions in the comments area and we will see you in the next video.